Hey, let me state the obvious. If you're not taking high probability setups and trades, you're probably losing money that you don't need to lose. But how do you know whether or not the setup you're looking at is a high probability setup? Well, in today's session, I'm going to share four tips that will show you exactly how to know when a setup it has high probabilities of success. So hey, this is Dennis Wilburn, the Autopilot Trader. Welcome to this session of Trade Your Way to Wealth, Financial Freedom. Let's jump into today's session right away. There's so much to share in this particular session. You're gonna love it. Watch it to the end. See you on the video. Hey traders, Dennis Wilburn, the Autopilot Trader. As I said in the intro, we've got some really great stuff to cover in today's session. Uh, but before we get down to that, this is the second week in January 2023, and I want to provide you some encouragement. Dad it. 2022 for many traders was a really tough year. However, don't quit is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, there's a lot to be learned in 2023, and one of the things that I am committing to is getting rid of the helping you get past the trading myths. In other words, there, there are things we believe about trading that aren't necessarily true. And I'm going to apply my three decades of trading experience and success to help you get past those. So uh, if that is something that interests you, hey, subscribe to us here on the uh, YouTube channel. But also think about becoming an autopilot trader. Take a test flight. It could change. The future of your trading. So let's go ahead and get into today's session. I am so excited. Some new things that are coming on board, and I'm really glad for that. And uh, as we say, hey, let's get ready to rumble. So here's what I'm going to be doing today. One, I'm going to take a look at the goals. What's my goal? Uh, as I stated earlier, I want to help people get past the myths of training, tr of trading, but also provide them some rock solid opportunities for looking at particular stocks, knowing which way the uh, indexes are going. Uh, and so to do that, I'm going to slightly change the lineup. I'm going to take a look at the trade of the week. We had some really great trades going into this week. I want to share those, share one of those with you on a weekly basis. Then we'll take an index review, a trading tip based on questions you're asking me. Got a great question this weekend that uh, last week that I'm going to share with you today. And the answer to that, and then stocks on the radar for next week. So let's go ahead and jump into the day's session. This game remains the same as it usually is. So here's the trade of the week. And my trade of the week was TNA. And that's Tango November Alpha. That is the three-time leverage ETF, bullish ETF of the Russell. On, for the autopilot trading members, we put out an alert on that on the 25th of December. Uh, and said, hey, if price action does a certain thing, we want to get in. And that is, and there's exactly what happened. We put it in an order to buy at $30.80. Ended up getting filled on the 28th of, um, of December when we did this pullback and actually almost got stopped out. Almost hit the stop, <coughs> stop loss. Okay, fortunately, we did not hit the stop loss, and then it went on in into an uptrend, held it through the first of the year, and we took partial profits at 12% on a, a piece of the shares that we own on the 9th of January, which is right there. And then it continues to proceed on up, and we took out our second level of partial profits at 20% on the 12th, which was day before yesterday, or day before today. I'm still holding remaining shares, and we're up over 25% on those. And so for me, this was a great trade for us. Uh, and it's it's the kind of trade that we try to focus on with the leverage ETFs with the autopilot trading. So it came out on the pre-flight checklist that I share with our premium members, and it shows you it shows them exactly what the what the trigger is, where I'm buying, what my profit targets are, what my stop loss is. And so it's um, really, it is like a, a cookbook. And I call this my pre-flight checklist because as I was flying with the Navy, we would use a checklist to make sure the airplane was safe to go fly in. So, so here's what we're doing for the year so far. Uh, and let me go back one. Okay, as you see, you can see a little bit of yellow down here, and you can see that what we've been able to do the first part, the first two weeks of 
uh, the month is actually we're coming right up pretty close to hitting our monthly objective for our results on the Act autopilot trading service. So there's where we were last week at this time. And then uh, this was as of the close today. And there's where we're sitting up right there. And I'm very pleased with this. This is one of the best starts to uh, a year that I've had. I'm always cautious about my start for the year. But what I've what happened was the uh, adjustments that we made to the autopilot service go in, in the last three months of 2022 actually reduced the amount of whipsaw we were having and also provided us a where we're getting more. And uh, so it's carried on into 2023. I'm not going to say that two weeks has given us a projection of where we're going to be at the end of the year, but I'm saying that that I am very pleased with what has in fact transpired so far. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the indexes. Let's jump over here to first the S&P, the spiders. I'm going to run through this really quickly, and we'll see what's happening. As you can see, the, the spiders in the S&P closed above this 200-day moving average. Now, there's still a level of resistance that is here at the trend line, as you can see right there. That may be the area where the S&P stalls out. And so, however, it's looking fairly positive in that this is now a higher low. It's the first one of the first ingredients of going back into a new uptrend. In order for the uptrend to be totally, you know, a new uptrend to be actually uh, uh, taking place, we need to take out those highs right there. That high from the week of, and I'll give you a number on that. That is the high of from the week of uh, the 12th of Jan uh, December, which is that high right there. We take out that high, watch it to go, uh, continue to move up. On the the uh, the uh, indexes, we are getting extended. And so it would not surprise me to see profit taking kick in maybe next week or maybe the week after. Remember, we've got the Fed coming up on the 1st of uh, February. That could affect the, uh, uh, the indexes. But right now, looking pretty good. Still has, still has a little bit of overhead to get above. But uh, uh, it, it is, again, up above the 200-day uh, uh, moving average, which is a positive if you are in the bullish camp. So let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ. What's going on with that? Uh, I like the NASDAQ from the aspect of, look where it's closed. It closed above the 50, positive. The, 50, the 200 is way up here. So it's got a ways to go before it reaches the, uh, the uh, downtrend line and the 200-day moving average. The, the uh, uh, TSI, the momentum, has shifted to the upside. And is in the process of giving us up, up, you know, a a shift on the weekly chart, which is long time, you know, long term bullish. And as we see over here, we had two really nice hammers and dragonfly dojis that took place uh, uh, the last week in December and the first week in January. That now has come, you know, that has been uh, fulfilled to the upside. And we'll see if we continue to climb the wall. <laughs> and so let's see, what else is are we looking at? Uh, let's take a look at the Russell. IWM. As you can see, Russell has really broken out, but it's also running directly into what? It's running into potential resistance. And we'll have to call it, you know, it's this resistance from a purely technical analysis standpoint. So let's see what happens when it gets up to the 188 level. And we say we had that trade on TNA, which the I t if if I had it to do all over again, really would sh you know, I would if I was a beginning trader, I would only trade the the lever or the index ETFs, primarily the leverage ETF uh, index ETFs, uh, focusing on the Russell IWM TNA and the uh, Nasdaq QQQ and TQQQ. Um, I think that that would, <clears throat> that would so greatly simplify and accelerate my learning curve as a beginning trader. So looking pretty good to the upside. Uh, the longer term uh, momentum has shifted. 
Uh, would not surprise me to see profit taking uh, pulling back into that 200 day moving average. So if I'm looking at the Q, the, the IWM, excuse me, I'm looking at support in two different areas or support in these areas right here. And that's a strong level of support, the 200 day moving average and the downtrend line that now becomes a level, it it's, uh, has uh, reversed its polarity and is now a good place to bounce from. So that's excellent. Let's, uh, so that's what we've got for the indexes. Okay. So the question was asked uh, of me this past week is, how do I know which way the market is going daily? And this was with somebody who was looking, I think, looking to be a day trader. And so it's a great question. Here's the factors to consider. One, Establish what the market structure and condition is. Now, day traders oftentimes are looking at a shorter time, of course, a shorter time frame. And so to do that, I, you know, you still need to take into consideration what is the trend, the, especially the longer term trend, because if the longer term trend is up, be very careful taking a downside day trade because you could get your face ripped off. Same thing, if the, if the major trend is down, the uh, inertia of the price action is also down. So if the price action with respect to the moving averages, you wanna check that out, and we'll take a look at that so you can see that. And then uh, if day trading, review the daily and intraday charts, make sure they're in sync with each other. Uh, when I say in sync, I mean, if the daily chart is going up, confirmed uptrend, wait on the intraday charts to take trades to the upside. Two, if you're a swing trader, which is that's what I am, I'm looking at reviewing the daily, the weekly, the monthly charts. I occasionally look at the intraday, uh, but primarily I can trade, I can plan my trades because I'm going to be holding them longer off of those charts. So simplify by using, you know, here's here's a simple rule. Simplify whatever you're doing by using this rule is use pullback setups in an uptrend, use pull, pull, back, yeah, pull up setups in a downtrend. So don't fight the trend for a few bobbles. Let's take a look at the uh, a chart that shows this. Let's go ahead and I think we can just bounce right back over to the, uh, and it, it, it varies by uh, by time. And so here's a daily chart on IWM. We'll roll it over here just a little bit. And we'll go back to, let's go back to when it broke down below. Once price actions breaks back below the 50 and below the 200, the major trend is shifted to down. So if you want it, have a higher probability trade, look for trades to the downside. As you can see, as I said, once I get into a downtrend, I'm looking for a pull up. And what is a pull up? It's this move here, back into a level of resistance. And then, and each one of these, is, you know, if you're a day trader <coughs> or a short-term swing trader, each of these is a tradable dump in this particular case. Now, some people try to do the counter trend trade, and that's all well and good, but you want to be careful when it starts to hit into levels of resistance. A higher probability perspective is trade it, just let it go. Wait, wait, wait. I'm back into resistance. I'm in a downtrend. As soon as it drops back below the 200, bingo, I'm in that particular trade. And as you can see, it goes on down to... As you can see, no, a, a, a fairly dramatic drop. So, again, the rule, uh, below the 200, below the 50, trade to the downside. The flip side of that rule is above the 50, above the 200, trade to the upside. So on IWM, which way should your bias be for your day trading? I hope you answer that question with to the upside. So if that tip helped, leave a comment. And also on the uh, YouTube channel, ask me another question. I'd love to be able to help you get through whatever, you know, or, or answer any questions you're looking for or point you in the directions where on the uh, 
Trade your way to wealth and financial freedom. We have an awesome thing that's going to happen. Don't let your trading in 2023 crash and burn. <laughs> Very important. Launching in 2023 with this special session of Trade Your Way to Wealth and Financial Freedom with one of the top mindset trading coaches in the United States today. This guy is absolutely awesome. He's a personal friend of mine. I'll put a Zoom link down in the description. If you want to attend this because it's going to be, you know, standing room only, it's a Zoom meeting, but it's going to be, uh, the seats are going to be limited. You need to email me or jump on my emailing list. And who is it? It's Michael Moss of Mar Mara Wealth out of New York. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, again, uh, Mike has done an outstanding job of just growing not only his trading business, but also his coaching business. And so, as I said, a top-notch uh, coach. And I would not at, invite him onto this webinar if it weren't for the fact that he's an outstanding guy. I've been a real blessing in my life. So with that, that's it for today. And so uh, 2023, I believe it's a year for, for both breakthrough and co to consistent trading and success. If you have any questions, again, leave the questions or send me an email with uh, whatever trading question you would like to ask. And... Um, we will look forward to seeing you on the 20th. You don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. You can tell I'm, I'm excited about it. So with that, I'll say aloha, God bless, and uh, look forward to seeing you next weekend.